In this movie, we're going to talk about a potential shift. In the last movie, we covered, well, the total energy shouldn't look like something like this. There's an interesting problem here. If I look at the potential energy at the beginning, let's zoom in on that region, we can see that the potential is zero at time equals zero. That kind of makes sense. We designed it to be that way. But there's uh, something else curious happening here. Let me bring this down. Notice that at time zero, kinetic energy does not exist. Now this, hmm, was it a problem taking data? Is, it, is that the problem here? Should I, should I retake the data? Or is there something else going on? Potential energy is based upon position. That's the variable from the, the motion sensor. All these other values are constants. If we look at kinetic energy, we have one-half mass velocity squared. Velocity is coming from channel 1 and 2. But how do we get velocity? Velocity is defined as the change in position divided by the change in time. Well, at time equals zero, we don't have any time, first of all. No change in time, anyways. And we don't have any change in position at time equals zero. We actually need some data points before Data Studio can calculate the velocity. Remember, this is real data. So what I'd like to do is call this my initial value of energies. In other words, this is a modified time zero, which means I want to shift this potential plot vertically down so that when my kinetic starts, my potential is zero. That will make the analysis a lot cleaner. This is not necessary, but it will allow the potential to start at zero. Kinetic is going to be the total energy, so these two should touch. It's also going to help at the end of the data. Sometimes we take data with the cart going past our zero point of potential. And we want to make sure when we analyze the data that we're stopping when potential is at the same point as where it started. We don't want to analyze any data when the cart goes below that point. So let's zoom back in on the time scale. And then I'm going to turn on the smart tool, the little crosshair right here, and drag it up to match the first kinetic value. Then I can take the horizontal dash line and just drag it down. See, I'm not changing the time value. I'm trying to find out what is the potential right there. And it looks like it's 10.2 millijoules. So I can take my equation for potential energy here and shift everything down by 10.2 millijoules. That means when I have my first kinetic value, it will equal total energy because the potential will be zero. So let's go into our calculator and go into potential energy. And we're going to subtract 10.2. All right, let me separate that out a little bit so that you can see what we did. We took our potential energy equation. After multiplying by 1,000, we subtracted 10.2 millijoules which is simply going to vertically shift the data, just like x u naught shifted the data. Not very perceptible, except when we zoom in, we will see that, aha, now my potential is zero at my first kinetic value. And now the total energy is all kinetic energy. That allows me at the end of the data set to say that I do not want to evaluate any data past this point right here. So if I line this up, here is my last data. When I put this up here, I can see that I have a couple data points that happened when the cart went below the zero point. And so I want to evaluate data just to right, right here. So these values right here are the last ones that I can evaluate. So what we did was we simply shifted the data oops, for potential energy, allowing u naught to be 0, which gives us an indicator of when to stop the analysis.